The Todd Shapiro Show. Here we go. Canada Laughs, Sirius XM 168. Whoa. Well, of course, and I'm asking you. It's time for another amazing guest. Well, in this case, two guests. Brian Hatt's here, by the way. Oh, yeah, man. Just in case you fell asleep at the wheel there, I'm here. I'm here, buddy. You having fun? I'm having a great time, man. Good. But I dropped some acid uh, at the last break, so <laughs> most of you look like elephants right now, except for Bilal, who's a snake, who's slowly crawling up my pant leg. <laughs> He's actually just doing that. <laughs> That's right. Oh, God, God, those are his hands. Why are they also so cold? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. This is, really happening. This hey, is hey. why I come. Hey, uh, <laughs> stop it. Now I'm Sorry. getting excited. Now I'm giving you two jokes for one. That's too much value. Uh, Steven and Daniel Shahori are here. Hey, guys. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Nice to Thank you so much. <laughs> We're just talking about Brian on acid. That's right. Yes. Back when I, I saw this kid, back when he was in Mustard and Relish. Do you remember it? I remember his oh, my sketch God. Show God. That's right. With Ennis Esmer. And my favorite sketch Can you trip. get through all the way? Uh, no. Oh, I can, but... Uh. Cole, no, oh. that's the other one. Uh, uh, Con, Con, Connor, 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 yeah. Connor, nice work. Green. Yes. And uh, the other kid. Dave, some other, some Dave, other guy. The, Sammy's the pretty one. Sammy's was he the pretty Excuse one? Me, there you go. So you guys were, were, I was a pretty were one. our favorite sketch But they were our favorite sketch Literally. Yeah. They were the funniest thing on the sketch scene. Why, why did it happen? Why did, when did it stop? Uh, we kind of got to a point where they let us pitch some shows. Nobody picked it up. Sam moved back to Vancouver. And mm-hmm. we just didn't want to do it without him. God that was damn it. it. Yeah, he That's had some family shame. stuff he had to go take care of. and We loved you guys. Oh, uh, man, well, I loved just working in that space. The old Second City, man. Like, the old well, tell me the history with Tuesdays you guys, Steve, shit, man. Stephen and Dan, because this is fascinating. Because like, this dating back, what, 10, 15 years ago? This is back to, like, 99. 20 fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah almost 20 years early ago. Early 2000s, yeah. That's when we got onto the scene, was around 99. So tell give me a little brief history here. Yeah, well, you know, Dan started working at Second City, like, in 1998, I think. Yeah. think and from that we started we sort of force gumped our way into the second city into that community where, where dan was like a drink runner i think right yeah so there's a host and uh i was just had just started getting to stand up and doing some writing and stuff like that and we just started making inroads in that community meeting a lot of cool people we started doing a little bit of sketch ourselves and writing and uh, we just met a lot of great people we went to a lot of different shows around town and that's where we met Folks like the uh, the good young lads of mustard and relished, uh, and which is a name worked much better on paper. Let me yes. tell you. Otherwise, it sounds oh like condiments. Oh my god, it got but butchered. Yeah, you really have to pronounce it properly to get the full <laughs> yeah. effect of the of the comedy. Uh, and yeah, we just we just ran in those circles for a long time, and eventually we started when we started putting on shows of our own back in even back then in '99. We, you know, they're pretty weird, and one of them involved, uh, it was like a musical, and there was like aliens and, and Nazis and like USO servicemen and, and all this crazy shit. And Sounds like the States. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I think we were, yeah, we were about 18 years ahead of our time. And we thought, you know, if we don't find a way to promote this, probably nobody else is. Um, and so we kind of learned how to do it, and I just went to some little seminar i think that the french wrestle put on and and it gave me sort of a, a bit of a sense of how to do it and then we just started learning more and more how to do it and we got some media attention from that right You're talking about writing a press release uh, yeah, specifically writing a press release and, and sending that out to the media so they could know what the hell you're doing. Uh, and then within a short period of time, other people in the comedy community would come to us and be like, hey, Shahoris, you were able to do this for yourself. Can you help me out with this? And usually we did it for no money and eventually it turned into getting some money for it and sort of snowballed from there. And we did it for the second. Uh, we were the publicist for the Second City for seven years. And we had the honor and pleasure of working with some legends in this industry. Uh, we we were lucky to do this for Louis C.K. back in the day, Apollo Poundstone, wow. McDonald, uh, just lo- an amazing group of people. And just, again, Forrest Gumped our way into it. We didn't know how But you're to... still on the performing side as well. Yeah, yeah. I love that. More more as writers, uh, but some performing. I live in Los Angeles now, so I'll do some you know, writing out there and, and a bit of stand-up here and there and things like that. So we never we never wanted to abandon that side of it. No, but we just figured let's learn this side of it as well. But this is the po- like uh, the mindset of the book was we got to stop doing this and get back to what we originally wanted to do. The writing and, and stuff. This PR shit is getting in the way. <laughs> so let's just write this down and be done with this. But of course, when you start doing that, then it becomes your focus. And now we're doing it more than ever. Tell me about the book. Yes, uh, the book came out on Tuesday. It's, Congrats! It's called Media thank Horror. You so much Media Horror. 
Uh, it's just about it's it's from the perspective of artists or anybody, but it's f it's from the perspective of artists, but it's for anybody <laughs> who has anything they wish to spread with the world via the media. So you could be a restaurant owner, you can be an athlete, you could be an entrepreneur, anything like that. Anything that you want to come on a show like this and talk about, that's what this is for. And how much of the book explores the difference from when you started in 98 to now with social media and how people really yeah. can grab a bull by the horns and go and run with it and do some shit and make a difference? And you know, so is there, is there yeah. a lot of that evolution of it? Uh, absolutely, and it's kind of, it's both. Like some of it is still this really old school, you know, approaching the media and uh, sending out emails and stuff like that. A lot of it is very much the same as it was back then, but then when you add in the social media elements and you add anything involving web 2.0 as they call it uh you know you want to throw that in as well and the one thing we caution about that is a lot of folks they think of promotion these days only as social media so they'll be like okay i'll go on instagram and, and facebook and uh, and twitter and everything else which you definitely should do uh but typically a lot of the folks there it's they're mostly preaching to their friends which is not a bad thing uh, except there's, you know, when, when we update this book, like a couple of years from now, there's going to be a chapter that just says, screw your friends in the <laughs> sense that, yeah, your friends are great. Definitely let them know about this stuff, but they're not reliable. And if you've been in this industry for more than like a year, like I talk about how first time I did stand up, uh, you know, 20 years ago, my friends would get mad if, if I didn't tell them I did a five minute set somewhere. And then two years later, we're like, Hey, we just wrote a comedy musical and we're doing it at the second city. And they'd be like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can come to that. <laughs> so your friends are not reliable. They'll say they're going to come to stuff. They, but they got lives, right? So you really want to tell your friends, use that for social media, but also make sure that you, you expand it outside of that, you know, that bubble. Yeah. I mean, uh, and that, I mean, this is great advice. Like I, I want to read the book personally. Like one of the things I think most comedians who come on the program would, would say about me is a, not a great host, but a great hustler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and I always have been a great hustler and I sort of had to, I work with my own sponsors. I love doing events. We just did something at TIFF. I, yeah. you know, I do a, I do a, my own show on during, during Christmas every year and all this kind of stuff. This is but, why you have your own show. Yeah, right? I guess. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I kind of get on some of the comedians yeah. sometimes Good. like, yeah, boys, you guys got to push yourselves Good. a little bit more so and, do we. Yeah. and, 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 and don't be afraid of that. And don't be afraid yeah. of the failure that can come with that. That's I think right. that's a lot of it. Yeah. It's that they're confident they won't bomb on stage, but they might confident getting people to go and yeah. watch them on stage. It's funny. And, yeah. And with that being said, though, I go, it, it, it's, it is an asset, but one I know I even need to improve on, like, and, and I, sorry to personalize this, but I thought to myself, like, why wasn't I on, say, BT somehow promoting right. that we're doing this oomphalange where we're giving gifts to influencers right. and people are drinking for free and I'm launching a beer? Right. Like, you know, granted, we have this audience and I have my social yeah. media audience, but it's got to expand. I really appreciate that advice. Yeah. yeah. So and, how do you yeah. get on the media then? How do they, do we have got to hire you? Yeah, well, we're never going to say no to being hired for anything. Okay. And, you know, I mean, part of the joke was we wrote this book so that people would never bug us about doing publicity for them for free yeah. again. Uh, I love we, that. We still, I love do, that. we still do a lot of pro bono stuff. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, part of it is, just, you know, a lot of, uh, you guys were talking earlier about just, you know, trying to, to motivate comics and other folks to actually get off their asses and do something. And the pro problem is a lot of creative folks, typically aren't very administrative and but they also buy into that uh, sort of it's a self-fulfilling prophecy like no i'm a creative dude i know how to do this stuff and there's a great quote which i didn't come up with just basically saying if you you can't teach uh an administ a non-creative administrative type you can't teach them to become creative but you can teach a creative person to do the administrative stuff it's not that hard and that's kind of how we so yeah. we, we explain in the book how to behave toward the media and also here's some basic administrative stuff that is not hard and trust me, you can do it even if you're the flakiest of flaky I, performer. I'm, I'm not going to lie, dude. Like this, uh, this is a, an extremely vital book. Like I'm going to get this book. This is, this is so important in this day and age because people need to go and take responsibility for themselves. They need to be accountable and they got to go out and hustle and go and get it. And if you listen to any of these like motivators, like, you know, the Tony Robbins of the world, or yeah, I even think of Adam Sandler as an example. Like here's a guy who ended up getting his own production company years and years ago and employed all his buddies and did all that stuff. He didn't wait for the big Paramount pictures to go and hire him and stuff. And, and I, you know, all this stuff, I think, it, I think it's really, really cool stuff. And you're doing a seminar on it too, right? Correct. Thanks for plugging that. Yeah. That's uh, it's tomorrow actually in Toronto. No, it's Second City's uh, John Candy Box Theater from 12 to 5. And, uh, yeah, we, we kind of thought, too, since we're on, if, uh, you know, if anybody, if they go to mediahor.me, that's our website, uh, we say the first, what, three folks who drop us an email there can, right. can come to the seminar. That's it. Um, you know, Just because this show has been value. very good to us. Uh, Bilal's been very good to us. 
And Bilal will tell you, like, there's no trick to this. He'll tell you that all I do with this gentleman is every few weeks I'll email him with something new and say, this is what we're doing or this is what the people we're working with are doing. Can we please come and speak to you about this? Well, and the truth is, like, uh, uh, all of it's uh, cloud. You know, by the way, I think Bilal's dying, so this might be, <laughs> this might be the last time we, yeah, we have an opportunity yeah, to yeah. talk to Bilal. But are you are you okay? So, uh, do you I'm need anything? Can, I, can I, you get a hall? So, okay. Can, can, you, can you maybe go to the hall? But, okay. Who had September 15th in the pool? Let's do this. <laughs> Someone's winning tonight. <laughs> the, that pool was actually when he loses virginity, but oh, sadly, yeah. he's dying we figured he'd die that. first. Yeah, yeah. It's up to 15 G's, though. That's that's nothing to sneeze at. Um, now I already forget. No, you guys have been. Um, everyone who comes on the show is, is good to us. Like it's 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 this show's not entertaining without everything that you guys do in that community. And I think that's exactly what you're saying when you first got in in '98. Like. You meet the most special and coolest yeah. people, and yeah. I say that sincerely. And I almost can't talk to anyone else away from the show anymore because they're so fucking boring. <laughs> the <laughs> the non-comics, they're yeah. they're hard to deal they're with, man. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. just <laughs> nine to five cattle. It's disgusting. Boring as shit. And then, uh, unless I you're learned, listening, God bless you. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> unless you're buying <laughs> stuff from us, we love you. Yeah. But no, they they. Um, I don't know if you guys get this ever, but they'll they, you'll find out after like people in that nine to five community or the sort of, you know, the white picket fence type, they'll warn their friends about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you get that? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, you'll get some of that or you'll just have a relative living out in the suburbs and you'll, you'll something will happen yeah. to you or, or to them and they'll be like, you know, you could turn this into one of your little skits. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. 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 I love when your aunt's like, don't put me in your comedy show. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. That is Zero never, plans. Never going <laughs> to happen. <laughs> well, gonna talk you can about make your a show about rolls. us on oh, Friday yeah. dinner. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> You're that important. It That's is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well guys, nice to meet you. Thank you. Uh, Steven and Daniel Shahori. Uh, do we only, why do we only have Steve? At Stephen Shahori's uh, Twitter. I'm Only one of us has this. a okay. Twitter. Yeah, I'm lazy and Dan, stupid, and I should. For you. I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm too distracted. I know it's silly. I should be on Twitter, and I'm not. <laughs> well, it's kind of ironic after yeah, all of this. It but is. I like that. It is. I'm the yeah. I'm the social media. I'm not whore. even on LinkedIn. Okay, no, but you, you guys, <laughs> and uh, and you're out in L.A., Bo both of you in L.A.? I'm in Toronto, you're in Steve's in L.A. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm physically here right yeah. this moment. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that, well, because that was sort of my ultimate question, is how the fuck do brothers work together? Now I understand. Yeah, okay. yeah we telecommute 3,000 yeah. miles yeah. between them, and that's how you do it. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, well, we get out to L.A. too, so let's get you back on out there. I uh, love that. That'd be next. great. Um, and I'm sure we have some mutual friends, too. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, so thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, make sure you go to mediahore.me, and you can find out all the information. And again, they're going to, uh, if you send them an email, or I'm sure if you find Steven on Twitter, we'll we'll get a couple of you in there for free. Uh, it's happening tomorrow at the Candy Box Theater. John Candy, of sorry, uh, at Second City, Toronto, 12 to 5. Uh, that's awesome, dude. And the book will be available in Canada at Chapters, Indigo, Staples, Amazon, everywhere you can it's find It's out it. September 12th. It came out. Okay. Go yeah. get books. Go thank get the you. book. Okay. Thanks. Cheers.